on today's episode of Mile Higher. <laughs> Put him up. I just always wonder, it's like, what are you trying to get out of this? All right, baby shark, let's okay, go. Okay, here we go. Baby the shark. That was gnarly. That was like a lot. Why human? What's life? What purpose? <laughs> and there it goes. And there goes the <laughs> couple hundred bucks they just stole. <gasps> he had to have been like drunk, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Don't make us release our canine. <laughs> so the rampage ended when he stopped at a McDonald's for two McDoubles. He got Hell a little hungry yeah. grabbing that forklift. Oh, my God. Seymour has just been sitting here like this the whole time. I'm sorry, buddy. He yeah. needs a chiropractic Disarmed. Adjustment. Let me get him. Later. If you don't have an existential crisis like once a month or so. Yeah. Are you even human? So How is this even real life? Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 271. And today, we're here to have a little fun. We're back. That rhymed. 71, fun. Good That's one. what it's all about today. Love it. We're getting in the fall mood, too, in the Halloween mode. Yeah, the studio's in Halloween, in the Halloween spirit already. Yes, yes. We have a Who special guest here. His name is Seymour Bones. What's up, dude? He doesn't say much, but he's a good sport. Nice eyelashes there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got eyelashes. <laughs> Love it. He's looking good. He's repping some Mile Higher merch, which you can cop some for yourself. I don't think that one is sold out. Or is it? Is that one still available? I'm pretty sure it's available. Yeah. All right. MileHigherMerch.com. Check it out. Get it while you can. Um, but anyway, today we are going to be having some fun for once. I mean, we always have fun, but you know oftentimes I mean. we cover some pretty heavy topics and we are very serious about that. But today we need to let loose a little bit. Obviously, talking about the things that we do all the time gets pretty draining. I mean, we find it fascinating. We love doing what we do, but sometimes we need a little break. And so we're switching it up today by talking about some dumb criminals. It's been a while since we've done one of these. It's been a minute. I think this is the fourth one that we've done over the years. Four? Yeah, really? I think we're like on the fourth one, which this, the list of criminals we're going to be talking about some of them are just flat out dumb but some of the crimes are just honestly funny and yeah. were have gone viral as mm -hmm. you'll see for for different reasons so i'm excited to dive into these and just explore the lighter side of of true crime me too nothing nothing heavy or dark here today it's going to be so get some popcorn lay back and relax and enjoy the show before we get into the show we did want to remind everybody out there who's interested in submitting a paranormal story experience to our google form for our upcoming halloween episode yes. i'm very excited for this i'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to digging into some of your guys's wild experiences with the unknown the unexplained whether it's ghost stories maybe you've been possessed by a demon that'd be pretty <laughs> pretty cool to that'd explore yeah or we've you, never done anything like this no it'd no be we really haven't cool to see and interact with you guys in this way so the that'd only things great. that we ask are the ones that we end up picking will have video from the, the person submitting it, tell, talking about the story. Please record it in horizontal mode so it's full screen for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be around two minutes long. And they're on the Google form, which we'll link below in the description show notes. There'll be a way to upload footage and pictures and whatever other evidence you have. The more evidence you have, obviously, the more likely you'll get picked, the more interesting it is for everybody to, to learn about. So scary stories yep. we're open to all the things and also this includes like ufo type stuff yes it could be ufos it could be aliens mm -hmm. it could be angels i mean maybe one of you've been visited by an angel before or <laughs> you've had goblins come knocking i know i have a few times um <laughs> so whatever it is we're, we're open to it or maybe it's the men in black you never know mm. i mean it could be anything in, in the paranormal cryptid realm maybe you saw uh bigfoot you anything know, out of the ordinary whatever it is we want to see it. <laughs> Josh is hoping that you have seen Bigfoot. He's doing anything for more evidence at this point. Yes. These two are still, well, these three now still Wait, don't believe in uh, Bigfoot. Give us a uh, opinion on Bigfoot. Um, I think it'd be cool if he existed. Like, it seems like he's pretty, he's just kind of doing his own thing, right? He doesn't kill people. Hmm, he's well, some people stealthy. have claimed to have been attacked by him. Mm. Oh. But has he killed anyone? There's How nothing. do you prove that? How do we prove it? Yeah, that's true. 
I don't know. I guess the jury's out on that one. I'm going to go with. But you're open to them no, existing. <laughs> no. I think if, <laughs> generally, I'm going to say probably not. But All I right. feel bad for you, Josh, honestly. Please. I know. I know there's somebody out there who has heard him, seen him. <laughs> Send in Please. the evidence here. I need to see the evidence. Mail us a tuft of his fur. <laughs> yes. Give us we'll send a it to the lab. I just think his size is kind of what he's like. He, how do you miss him? Well, he's, he's so big. a like he's, a chupacabra. Yeah. They're smaller. So mm. he's big, but he's also potentially not like completely of this world. He could be interdimensional. He could be. He, we don't know if he's entirely just like a ape like creature. You know what I mean? He could have some sort of. Uh, <laughs> interdimensional abilities let's just put it that way like he's uh, able to slip maybe in and out of maybe view very quickly i'm 99 percent not believer but one percent is there okay i'm open to it send us the evidence maybe we can send it over to our friend mitch morrissey and his dna lab and he can <laughs> confirm it for us because i'm sure he's got C. dna to compare that to weed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we could smoke a blunt with bigfoot on the yeah show. we could that could be a nice time <laughs> if you're real if yeah, you're, you're invited. Up. If you're listening, big, big, <laughs> sir, big, <laughs> sir, big, <laughs> please come on. We will fly you out. Yeah, we'll definitely take you to a out. nice First dinner. Class. Take you to a nice dinner. Mm -hmm. Nicest, finest restaurant in Denver. This is what I have to deal with, everybody. It's just constant <laughs> ridicule. Oh, we love you, Josh. You're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're welcoming him. Yeah, yeah I want yeah. left. Oh my God, that'd be yeah. so cool. Yeah, we've Dream got a seat right there. Open chair. Seymour will move. It's all good. Seymour. Well, right. we'll see what, what we come up with. I'm excited for that episode, though. Me That'll too. Be I'm so pumped. In a few for weeks it. from now. So, mm -hmm. getting into Send the spooky in mood now. I think we, are, we have a cutoff date probably here very soon. We'll list it in the description box the last time you can submit because we have to obviously go through it to put the episode together. But let's go ahead and just dive right in to mm -hmm. our very first. This isn't really a, necessarily a dumb criminal, but this was a very viral. So I guess technically it's a traffic violation, but I don't know. I'll let you be the judge of that. So this guy was pulled over with a Watusi bull named Howdy Doody in his front seat. You heard me right, people. The front seat. He wasn't in the truck bed. He wasn't in the back seat even. He was in the front seat, and you're probably wondering, okay, how is he fitting a giant bull in the front seat of his car? Well, he was able to do it. On August 30th, 2023, the 911 dispatch in Norfolk, Nebraska, received a very strange call from someone driving. The caller reported that there was a bull riding in a car down the street, and cops thought they would find a cow or maybe a calf that could fit inside the vehicle, so they were pretty flabbergasted when they actually saw that this was not the case at all. It was a full ass bull in the front seat of this dude's car. And when police responded, this is what they found. Around 10 a.m., the Norfolk Police Division <laughs> responded to a call of a man driving eastbound on 275 with a Watusi bull in his passenger so seat. He's very uh, well, cute. Uh, the officers so received a call reference a car driving in like, town sir, that had a. Why have a, a bull in the front it. seat? Um, they because thought that not? it was going to be, you know, like a calf, something smaller, something that actually fit inside the vehicle. And the vehicle was big enough. Well, technically. As a result, the, the officer performed a traffic stop and addressed some traffic violations that were occurring. <laughs> Look at all the traffic yeah. violations. Yeah. Particular, a lot of poopy uh, situation. on that car. The occupant of the vehicle was identified as Lee Meyer of Neely. The Watusi Bull's He's name like, well, was Howdy Doody. This could happen. He was immediately pulled over by Norfolk police, and they performed a routine traffic stop. The officer wrote him some warnings. Um, oh, that's not too there bad. There were some signable yeah. issues with that situation. The officer chose to write him a warning and ask him to take the animal back home and, and to poop. leave the city. And, uh, Meyer and Howdy Doody are on their him. way back <laughs> home, and no one was hurt. Pretty cool setup there, though. Honestly, that. that's an engineering he, he really feat right there. That <laughs> cut the windshield in half. This is like a little old, like nineteen early nineties Ford Taurus that yeah. you cut the <laughs> passenger seat out of to, I assume, make a flat area for this giant twenty two hundred pound African Watusi bull to fit in. 
in Nebraska. Like, is that not so fitting? It's very Nebraska for very, sure. Very, very. So, and this this car is actually an old police car, which mm-hmm. is funny. And on the side, it says Arnold Lice. It's supposed to say Arnold Police, but the P and O are missing, so it just says Arnold Lice. <laughs> and the the license plate says Boy and Dog. So they did this traffic stop. They, you know, they're like, this is, we don't see this every day, so we're not going to give this guy really a hard time. We're just going to give him some warnings. And obviously it was newsworthy. So it's kind of a, kind of an exciting day. But this bull, Howdy Doody, is somewhat of a celebrity uh, over there in Nebraska. As he, goes, he should be. Yeah. I mean, that, those bulls are really impressive. They're so big and like the horns, they've got the long horns that come out. Really, really cool. He goes on walks with his owner, Lee Meyer, and attends the fair every year. His owner plays plastic bags in the back of the car for Howdy Duty's duty <laughs> and then hoses the car down afterwards. That's what I kept thinking. I'm like, how bad does it smell in there? Sitting right next to his bowl. He's fine with it. He's his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're watching the video, obviously it looks like uh, the bull had an ass explosion there on the back windshield. <laughs> <laughs> bullshit but that's yeah some bullshit you don't see that every day that's for sure and yeah, they were on their way to a parade i'm just like oh, i just would like to ask this guy what was the thought process behind putting him in the car i know why, why not, not just get, get like a, a trailer, horse right? trailer or something and put him in that well he wanted but may, him to you know what, actually have his moment maybe he's too wide because of his horns I'm thinking that it's probably something to do with that. Although I'm sure there's horse trailers that he could probably fit into, but maybe it's like too expensive or something. So he was yeah. like, I'm just going to cut out. And he probably, because aren't, you know, old cop cars pretty inexpensive for the most part? Yeah. Or they're like yeah. heavily sh- discounted or something like that? Well, especially that. that one. That one's like 20 years old. Yeah. Because so. why didn't he get something like a truck or something right, bigger? Right. To, most people you know, don't like, travel with their <laughs> livestock like that down, down the road. Yeah. Most people do not. I love that story though. But speaking of animals, this next one is honestly This is wild. Just a wild story. So July twenty eighth, twenty eighteen started out as a normal day at the San Antonio Zoo. But by the end of the day, oh boy, there was a lot of chaos because three people stole a baby horn shark, which was less than a year old, named Miss Helen from her tank. These thieves were Anthony shannon and his two accomplices his wife and their neighbor anthony had scoped out the shark for weeks in preparation for the heist and one day he visited the aquarium on a reconnaissance mission anthony told the staff he was an employee with the aquarium salt supplier and he said that his company instant ocean had sent out some bad salt and so he needed to come in and take some water samples the staff said they hadn't noticed any issues with the water but in the interest of the safety of the animals they let him come in and run his tests That means that Anthony got an all-access tour of the facilities, and little did the aquarium staff know, this incident was a clever way for Anthony to actually plan everything out to pull off this heist. The baby horn shark was being kept in an aquarium tank with an open top. Attendees were encouraged to reach into the tank and touch the marine animals inside, so the suspects were going to use this to their advantage, and their genius plan was to escape with the shark, get this, by bringing a stroller and making it look like it was just a baby. I mean, that's logical, right? Very logical. That makes sense. That's a great plan. Hide the shark as a baby. Side note, don't you think it's strange when aquariums encourage people to touch the animals? I think that's so weird. Like certain ones, I guess. And I know, um, I know like a lot of places have like stingrays and stuff. I, I don't know. I just, it, what it, you don't know what's on these people's hands. Well, and doesn't it stress they the usually animals like out have to be a, touched? To be fair, at most aquariums, they have like a place to wash your hands before you put True, your hands. True, but doesn't that stress them but, out? But yeah, I mean, like the fuck. No, they. I'm sure they don't enjoy it with little hands. Mm-hmm. Or kids, like you never know what there. they're gonna do or what True. they're gonna drop in there, drop a toy, and I don't know. Well, and in it's, this a, case, it's always been weird to me. In this case, you leave them vulnerable to theft if you don't cover uh, the top. Yeah, yeah. So other who would have thought? Take note. Who would have thought? So on the day of the theft, Anthony and his accomplices staked out the exhibit for over an hour, waiting for the perfect moment to swoop in and snatch this poor shark. And that moment finally came when the exhibit attendant stopped to help some other guests. And here's what happened next. So he's got the stroller. 
He's popping it out, getting it ready to this get his baby wild. shark. <laughs> it's like one of those little collapsible strollers. Yeah. He's trying to be casual about he it. Is. Look He's at trying them. to be playing it off real <laughs> hard. It's like, eh. They're like, all right, all right. All you people better watch the fuck out. He starts looking around. He's like, all right, staff is talking to somebody or away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make my way over. He's looking around. Oh my God. The staff members like, did he not realize he was on camera too? I know. It's stupid. That's why we call it dumbest criminals. <laughs> they commit the crime right in front of the camera. <laughs> yep. But it's well thought out. I like how there's like actual there families with, with strollers there in this guy's. Hold out. Well, there's the shark. You can see it right clearly right there. Oh. Man follows him in our back room. And no one else notices. They're so They're casual. Like coming out of our back room. After they've put the shark in here, this is um, like one of our buckets that they emptied into the tank. Um, it was a 5% bleach mix. Um, this man is putting it underneath his stroller. The bleach in a second. So you can see they've spilt water as they're coming out of the room. Not a Loading good way to transport marine animals, right by the way. Here who uh, noticed something yeah. going on and immediately alerted management. <laughs> well, imagine like, seeing that. Someone's wrapping a shark up in a blanket, putting it in their little collapsible stroller. <laughs> all right, baby shark, let's like, okay, go. Here we go. Baby, baby shark. shark do, 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 do. <laughs> My biggest fear is that someone's going to start and singing. right now they're <laughs> heading to our stairway, which is right near our admissions. Look at this guy. And they went out through the front door. Do you think they were trying to They see me them? rolling. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they hate oh, trying to catch me riding dirty. God. Dude. So ballsy. Just people around and everything so poor miss helen i know poor miss helen is right she's just trying to swim around and be a shark yeah. and this asshole is so confusing and put in a blanket i mean no well let's explain so on the video you can see anthony and his accomplices take the shark out of the exhibit and anthony had scooped up the shark with a net and told guests to move out of the way because <laughs> he was quarantining the move. shark he and his accomplices wrapped the shark up in a wet blanket. That's what you saw there. Put it in the stroller and then took it to the back room. And Anthony had known about the back room in advance thanks to that all-access tour that he had gotten when he pretended he was checking on the water. The other visitors who watched the trio leave the aquarium said that the stro stroller was sopping wet and left a trail of water as they walked. To transport the shark, Anthony needed a container with water, but it seems like they didn't even think that far ahead. That a shark was going to need fucking water. Well, so, and it's like people are going to look at your stroller and be like, there's no kid in the stroller. Why yeah. are you pushing a stroller mm -hmm. with water mm -hmm. dumping out the back? Pretty whack. Anthony went to the back room and found a plastic bucket. And whether he knew it or not, the bucket was actually half full of a bleach cleaning solution that was used to disinfect tools. So he dumped the bucket out and not on the floor, not in the sink. He dumps the bucket into one of the aquarium's cold water exhibit filtration systems, and all of the tanks on that system are connected. So this bleach solution caused harm to multiple tanks, and that included a huge risk to hundreds of seahorses, baby seahorses, starfish, and jellies. Honestly, what an asshole. I know. Yeah. Such an And idiot. he knew what he was doing, yeah. too. Well, wait till you hear what an expert this guy is. Well, expert, you know, I'm saying loosely but how familiar he is with right. marine life. So Anthony grabbed the bucket, put the shark in it after, you know, he had dumped it out and then put it into the stroller. And then he and his accomplices made their way up the stairs through the exit and out to the parking lot with Miss Helen, the shark. The water they used to transport the shark was around 52 degrees. And normally the shark was in a tank with 76 degree water. So the temperature change could have easily caused the baby shark to go into shock and this would have been fatal. Meanwhile, Chris Conk, the husbandry director for the aquarium, quickly noticed that something was very wrong. He sprang into action to save the marine life in the contaminated tanks. The staff saved the animals using sodium thiosulfate, or STS, which counteracts bleach. Had they been just minutes later, though, the animals would have been killed, which, thank God, they were able to, to save them. Yeah. The aquarium's general manager caught up with the shark thieves outside, <laughs> She asked to search the car, but Anthony refused. He told the manager that his son was very sick and that he needed to leave immediately. And just like that, Anthony took off with his shark, 
leaving his other two accomplices behind. But of course, as you saw, their faces were on surveillance footage, and so was their truck, including its plates, which led police right to their suspects, Mr. Anthony Shannon, his wife, and their neighbor. But Miss Helen was missing for two days while the police investigated, and the staff were very worried that she would not be returned home alive, seeing as the thieves thought a baby stroller was an appropriate place to keep a shark. Right after the theft, police in the aquarium blasted the surveillance footage all over social media, and tips came pouring in. And by the morning of July 30th, just two days after the theft, the police found the truck used in the theft, and it belonged to none other than Anthony Shannon's neighbor. Officers were preparing a search warrant for Anthony's property when he showed up, and Anthony let the cops inside, and they quickly found the shark. She was swimming in a giant pool full of other sharks and marine animals. When police entered his home, they saw he had floor-to-ceiling glass fish tanks. We're talking huge fish tanks. One was 6,000 gallons and one was 2,000 gallons, and they were full of fish and exotic marine animals. That's huge. So, Mm -hmm. like... That's massive. Like our tank at home, 150 gallons. Really? Oh my so 2, God. So 2,000, 6,000, like 6, literally 000. like this whole room. Dude, that's, he put a lot of money into that. Of Yeah. Very, very Crazy. expensive. And there's actually a lot of YouTubers. I, I follow a lot of YouTubers uh, that this is what they do too. Their house is just filled with tanks and they have the coolest marine animals. So there's like a whole community. Yeah. Or like that show. People. Where they make those giant tanks for oh, celebrities. Oh, the tank. Tanked. Yeah. I love yeah, that show. Good show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but their tanks are a little tacky, if you ask me. Tacky Sometimes. tanks? Tacky tanks, yeah. <laughs> I like the more natural looking Yeah, I agree. Environments. But they're fun. They are. The holiday rush is right around the corner. And you know what that means? More stress and more packages to send. For us, you know, we've got our merch. We've got our CBD company, so a lot of packages go out on a day-to-day basis, but around the holiday season, it usually picks up, and that's just the busiest time of year for all of the different mailing and shipping services. But thanks to Stamps.com, they have taken out the stress and saved us so much money over the years and eliminated the need for us to ever visit the post office. Stamps.com is really your own personal post office wherever you are. With Stamps.com, all you need is a computer and a printer. They even send you a free scale so you have everything you need to print, postage, pack up your packages and ship them out right from where you are. Because you can even go into the stamps.com dashboard and schedule a UPS, USPS pickup and they come get it right from you. There's no driving to the post office waiting in long lines. It's that easy. Plus stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart, whether you're using Shopify, WooCommerce or something else. Stamps.com is easy to plug in to your online store. Running low, order shipping and mailing supplies, labels, and even printers from the supply store. But best of all, get huge carrier discounts up to 84% off of USPS and UPS rates to help your bottom line out. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you the fastest and cheapest shipping options. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses, including ours. Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need right from your computer, not just during the UPS, USPS business hours, but day or night, anytime you can print postage. There's no traffic, no waiting. So get your business ready for the holiday rush and get started with stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code MILEHIRE for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free, awesome digital scale. There's no long-term commitments or contracts required. Just go to stamps.com and click the microphone at the top of the page and enter code MILEHIRE. So Anthony tried to tell the police that he had a receipt for the shark, but they took one look at that receipt and apparently he's really bad at Photoshop and they knew right away that it had been doctored. And of course, he was immediately arrested. Anthony was charged with felony theft between $2,500 to $30,000. His prior criminal charges include aggravated assault, multiple charges of vehicle theft, evading arrest, and driving with an invalid license. Anthony and his wife and his neighbor confessed to the theft, and that night, charges against the other two were filed at large. The staff at the aquarium were overjoyed, as you can imagine, to have Miss Helen safely back home. She had to be quarantined, of course, and reacclimated to her tank, but she was a tough shark, and she recovered well. And everyone was lucky that Anthony had worked with marine animals before, so he did know what he was doing to some degree once the shark got to his house. Here's what an aquarium employee had to say about Miss Helen returning home. I am so, so 
happy um, that we got her back. Uh, she's healthy. She appears very healthy. Um, we didn't know if we would get her back. And so I was devastated when I found out that it happened. And now that we actually have her here, um, I'm overjoyed. Do you know how old this shark is? Uh, yes, she's less than a year. Uh, what she's been through. She's a little fighter. She, she's a survivor. Um, I'm very proud of her. I love it. I know. Those are really cool sharks, by the way. The horn sharks. Really? I don't know anything about yeah. them. Yeah. I don't know much about sharks. You know a lot about there's sharks. There's a ton of, I mean, this is one of the smaller breeds and because there's a lot of sharks you can't keep in tanks mm. because sharks have to, you know, they swim to breathe. So they, Wait, what? To <laughs> breathe, they have to continuously swim. You never oh, see sharks that. just like, like a lot of our fish at home, they'll just kind of like chill. Idle out, yeah. Yeah, idle out. Sharks oh. always, that's why they're always swimming around because that's how they breathe. So the, when do they sleep? They don't sleep. They can sleep like swimming. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's interesting. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. What a fun fact. Thank you for that. So the aquarium valued Miss Helen at $2,000, but Anthony said that she was worth no more than $800, and the valuation was raised to $3,000 after the aquarium's investment in her. Anthony said he wanted to save the shark and called himself a marine activist. Of course. Yep. Here's the shark thief himself explaining why he did it. I just more or less wanted to help the shark and basically open an eye just to make things better, but I'm not a criminal. I actually took a shark, which was wrong, but it needed help at that point in time. And I had That's stuff with house. me due to previous experiences from where I was at. As an activist, you know, I have a mission. So it's not a mission to steal for profit. It's a mission just to give the fish a better health. No hiding fish from anybody else. The fish had full access when they asked for it. No, I would not go and do it at no store like that because I have a family and I have to make sure I don't get charges on me like that. But if there's any other animals that need help, yes, I will still do it. I still will go out there and rescue them, but not move and capture sharks like that because I'm sure with the media what's going on, they'll take better care of their animals from now on. Well, there's no evidence that they weren't taking care of the animal. Plus, you took it and then wrapped in a fucking wet blanket and put in a stroller and then put it in water that was way colder than it should be. So you almost killed it. Right. It would have defeated the whole purpose of right. doing that. Right. I I feel like he just wanted to have a baby horn shark. Maybe. For his collection. He said that a friend had previously told him that a lot of the animals at the aquarium were getting sick and dying. And he claimed that on the day of the theft, he saw Miss Helen was in distress, which is why he chose to take her, which doesn't really make sense since he clearly planned this in advance. He didn't just like see the shark and on a whim, decide to save it because it wasn't doing well. And again, there was no, the shark was completely fine. Authorities say there's no evidence that Anthony was trying to sell the shark. He told them that he was just trying to replace a pet horn shark of his that died. The aquarium also said that Anthony's claims about the conditions at the aquarium were not true. Many marine animals only live for a few years. And while it's sad, those deaths that his friend told him about were just a natural part of life. And he didn't have any more evidence beyond his friend you know, told him things weren't well. And obviously there are a lot of uh, bad aquariums and zoos out there that do not take great care of animals. Right. We're not like trying to belittle that at all, but this is not the way to do it. I think we can all agree that you don't fight back against that by stealing animals in a baby carriage. Anyway, Jamie Shank, the assistant husbandry director, said that she actually made the name Miss Helen up on the spot when police asked her and the name stuck for a while, but the shark was eventually renamed Eloise. So, Eloise, hope you're doing well, girl. Glad you're back home. Yeah, they can live up to 12 years. And I think there's been uncurrent, unconfirmed reports of a shark reaching 25 years of age. So they can, they can live quite a while. Some, some don't live that long, though. Yeah. So it just really depends on the species. But horn sharks are really cool. They, they live really deep. I think it said 5,000 feet deep is where they live Wow. in the wild. So pretty, it's hard to say, was he really an activist or is he just, you know, a criminal and he saw an opportunity to get his hands on a horn shark? Well, if he is trying mind, to be an activist, he's certainly not doing it well. That's no, and it's like, that. I'd love to see his, his, a whole house tour of his and look at his tanks with 8,000 yeah. gallons of, I'm like, how good are your tanks at home as opposed to a giant aquarium that has probably much better, much larger equipment and a full staff of people that work that's on that's what tanks. i was gonna say unless he maybe has friends or hires staff or something it is actually a lot of work to yes. take care of marine life definitely like this is 
kind of silly, but like I worked at PetSmart and I'm not saying that it's comparative at all. PetSmart. Listen, Janelle's an expert. Yeah, I am an expert. No, but it is interesting because like I watched how many people it took to keep all of their animals, you know, healthy and alive. Like it takes a lot of people and you have to be on top of your stuff. So I can't imagine if you're like, you know, dealing with sharks and exotic animals like that. Totally. Yeah. Like Josh said, we have a 150 gallon saltwater sink and it's it's hard to it's very it's been our first year. Well, if it. you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, you're essentially creating the ocean mm-hmm. in your house, mm-hmm. whereas the ocean has had millions and millions of years to evolve and it. it has all of the bacteria and environment and biology that's required for that ecosystem to thrive. And essentially you're creating an artificial version. And so it takes a very, very long time for saltwater aquariums to mature and build up that ecosystem for everything to truly thrive and be healthy i mean it's 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 really hard we've definitely gone through a few fish and yeah it's a have. learning process uh it's the worst it's yeah it sucks like i love my little clownfish and they're some yeah, of the hardest have, to they were to hard. keep alive but we've got some strong ones now though we they're do good yeah it's starting to finally thrive and we're starting to build up that you know the algae growth and there's so many different things we have live coral in there and stuff and mm-hmm. it's it's really cool once you get it thriving and healthy though but this next one is probably my favorite on the list. So let me start by asking these two questions. What would you do if an armed robber entered the restaurant you're at or bar or store and was like, give me your money, pointing a gun at you? What would you do? How chill are you? I am not chill. Would you start screaming and say, yes, take everything I have? Yes, I would. Same. If he's like, get on the ground, give me your wallet, give me your phone. I would be like, here's everything I have. Mm -hmm. And I can get you more. Uh, Yeah. You know, let me know. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't say that. Don't say I'll get you more. Then he's going to kidnap you. I would say just about anything in that moment. I think I'd be so terrified. (laughs) But I would certainly not be like, "Mm, no, come and get it. (laughs) I'd be like, here's my car keys. Yeah. Here's my birth certificate. What do you need? (laughs) Let me know. I'd be That's terrified. probably the, the right answer, especially Maybe. for you guys. But I'd do a quick disarm. Especially though. for you guys. What are you saying? You're just disarm way stronger. His, his gun. Just there's mm. a lot of moves you can do real quickly. I've been oh, watching. Really? Yeah. Oh, can you show us? Yeah, you can. Can you demonstrate? Yeah, on please Seymour? get up and do it. Yeah, I, I'm asking for real. Here, I'll hold Seymour for you. We don't have. He does. Seymour doesn't have a gun. I need a gun to pretend. To do We're this. pretending. Oh my god. So what you do, so if he's holding the gun, you get as close, come closer. All right, so here's what you do. If Seymour's holding a gun to me and I'm just here drinking my beer, I'll turn to him. And if it's in my face, pretty easy, (laughs) pretty easy. You just go, bah! (laughs) That's one move. So if he's got the gun to my head, you just do a quick pull his arm over but otherwise if so say a guy's standing no no say say he's back a little bit and he's pointing it at my chest here okay so what you actually want to do is get closer do not take this as real advice get closer to the gun here <laughs> okay so if he's holding the gun he says give me your money I want your wallet I'll say okay okay put my hands up I'll walk closer to him <laughs> so he comes closer with the gun he's at right at my <laughs> chest like this I hold my hands like this, and all I got to do is go. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Done. Disarmed. And there's another move, too, where you can actually take the gun. What I'd actually do is I'd actually grab the gun, twist his arm, and then use my body weight to pull him this way, which would then effectively twist the weapon out of his hand into my hand. And then I would bust a cap on his ass and that would be the end of it but <laughs> dude seymour looks fucked right? yeah seymour just got he just got he done. needs a moment just let him be <laughs> that's a he wasn't ready for that he's gonna call osha yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> oh should he stick in their asses <laughs> or you could do that or do what tony did so mm. this tony. clip comes out of st louis missouri his name's tony tovar chillest man on earth man for real he was at his 
hometown bar, Behrman's Tavern, just enjoying an ice cold brewski. He's a hardworking master mechanic, works his ass off. All right. At the end of the day, he just wants to chill out, have a cold one and just chill. Talk to people at the bar. He likes to just hang out, kind of wind down the day. But on August 28th, 2019, something very out of the ordinary happened. Just after midnight, a man barged into the tavern, wielding a large, heavily modified pistol. He ordered everyone to get on the ground because this was a robbery. Now, most people will be pretty freaked out and start complying with the robber's orders, but this robber earns a spot as one of our dumbest criminals for this one key mistake, assuming that Tony was the type of guy who would give any shits about him. Here's what happened next. A terrifying moment for anyone. An armed robber carrying a shotgun enters a bar. You can see the patrons who've dropped to the floor. That's it me. happened inside a bar in St. Louis. But check out this guy. He calmly takes a sip of beer as everyone around him dives for cover under the bar. Then he looks at his phone as if he doesn't have a care in the world. He's being called the world's chillest man. The gunman sticks his rifle into the guy's side and grabs for his phone. But the unfazed dude isn't having it. And as the gunman points the gun directly at him, he calmly lights a cigarette. So who is the guy? His name is Tony Tovar. And he says he remains calm because, quote, I just had a really good feeling he wasn't out to harm anybody. After taking money from other patrons, the robber forced the bartender to open the cash register. He took all the money, 200 bucks in total. Wow. While Tovar just height. sits there taking it all in. I like how the other guy gets up, too. He's like, oh. He's like, you know what? I'm joining him. <laughs> yeah. That's the energy I need in my life. I need to have the confidence and the chillness of Tony. So the security footage didn't reveal, you know, what was actually being said or any sound. But Tony revealed what was said. He uh, demanded that everybody hit the floor. And I just kind of ignored him. <laughs> it frustrated him very much. But. He said he needed the money out of my wallet. He pulls his. And I phone. said I only got two dollars left, and that's for my next beer. <laughs> Puts the barrel of that gun <laughs> into your rib cage. What's going through your mind? He was reaching for my phone at the same time, so it was going for my mind. Is no, this is not going to happen. I actually, told him, "Hey, since you're back there, get me a beer." He looked at me and says, "No, get your own beer." <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. Oh, so again, the robber made off with. A whopping 62 bucks and a cell phone from the patrons and the employee and only $200 from the register. Imagine doing an armed robbery with a gun mm -hmm. for $262 and a cell phone. It's a bad day. Don't think that's quite worth it. Mm -mm. And the robber was 37-year-old Kevin Moore. He was arrested and charged with four counts of first-degree robbery and four counts of armed criminal action. He wrote a letter to the bar from okay. prison and apologized. So we love that. And the bar has that letter tacked up on the wall. Pretty awesome. And now Tony is sort of a local celebrity. Isn't that amazing? People on the street will recognize him and come up and say hi. And many people have asked Tony what he thinks about the letter that Kevin wrote. And not only is Tony a chill ass guy, he's a class act too. He said, you know what? If I met him again today, I would just ask him to pray with me. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. For his actions that day, Tony was dubbed the world's chillest man, as you heard, and many people would agree that he is very chill. Here's what his boss had to say about him. Tony is the world's chillest man. That's I right, brought baby. him in. He's a conscious worker. He cares about what he does. He does a very good job for us. Not sure if somebody put a gun in my ribs, uh, I wouldn't give him whatever I had to give him, but he stood tall and didn't seem to bother <laughs> but Tony said that he's just a guy who's fed up with people in South City trying to control others with firearms and aggression. His advice for anyone in a similar situation is this. If you're worried about getting hurt, comply with the robber's orders. Don't do what he did as cool as it looks. And that's great advice. Definitely keep that in mind. In 2021, the robber Kevin Moore was sentenced to 141 months. That's almost 12 years in prison after he pled guilty to one count of robbery and a gun charge. Wow. 12 years in prison. I mean... For 262 bucks on a cell phone. Yeah. Is that worth it? E nope. But he regrets that every day. Oh, I'm sure he does. <sighs> At least he said sorry, though. That's a nice little touch. Yeah, there. we actually have a few apologetic 
-hmm. criminals on yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Like this next one. Yeah, the cupcake burglar. Well, it's official, folks. Fall is here. If you're like me, you're settling back into those crazy routines. With the kids at school, mine aren't, but some of your kids are at school. And spare time filled with whatever it may be, whether you're just taking the dog for a walk. That sounds pretty nice. Or you're jamming all the kids into the minivan heading to soccer practice. Or going to the pumpkin patch. It's busy. And when you leave, you leave your home vulnerable to burglars, usually dumb criminals. That's why we recommend Simply Safe Home Security and their revolutionary monitoring innovation 24 7 live guard protection is designed to help stop crime in real time. Now, if an intruder breaks into your home, Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can actually see, speak to, and deter them through Simply Safe's new smart alarm wireless indoor camera. The feature to speak to them is so genius. That's, that's really cool, honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any other security systems out there where their agents are actually like, hey, dude, we see you, man. Get out of there. We're going to send the cops down there if you don't leave. And they do that through the camera. It's really cool. The app for Simply Safe is one of the best that I've seen. The cameras are super crisp quality, so you can actually see what you're looking at. It's not like, my God, so many surveillance videos from mm -hmm. so many cases that we cover. It's just like, what is this? Yeah. What's the point of even having a camera if it looks like a garbled cartoon running? Mm -hmm. no, really bad. But theirs is not. It's really good. And it has come in handy for me so many times, especially when I'm home alone. Last week, Josh was at a concert and... I was upstairs in our room and I kept just hearing a noise. And you know, when you're home alone, you just hear things. It's the ghosts that you know, I bring home. I swear, it's like in your head most of the time. But to be able to pull up my phone and just check on everything and not have to go get out of my bed and go look around and freak myself out more. It's Indoor just, and outdoor. Yes, it's so nice. It's really nice. It gives That's you that peace of mind. mind. Install it your way. Do it yourself in about 30 minutes or have a Simply Safe expert set it up for you. And for a limited time, get 20% off your new system when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Visit simplysafe.com slash mile higher. That's simplysafe.com slash mile higher. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So on the night of May 26, 2023, all was quiet at the Something Sweet Bakery in Dunbar, Vancouver. The store was closed and the lights were off and its owner had locked up the place hours ago. But in the early morning hours, the bakery of all places received an unwanted visitor. It was a man who clearly wanted to come in for a cupcake. He tried opening the door, of course. It was locked. So he sat outside the store for 15 or 30 minutes before he decided to make his way inside. Let's take a look at what happened. Hey guys, this is a story of my business getting broken into last night at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, this guy showed up around three o'clock and decided to just hang out for a while. Really he sat outside for about 15 to 20 minutes. When the munchies honestly hit. knocked yeah. on the door, mm -hmm. just sat there, hung out, chilled and vibed. And then I guess he got bored sitting there oh. and decided to kick the door in. Um, so that was really great. Um, Me he really hungry. carefully gets into the door. So shout out my guy on the glass safety, uh, walks himself right into my bakery at three, probably three 30 in the morning at this point. And he walks around for a while and decides to take a rest. He must be really tired from breaking into my business. So he sits down for, I don't know, a solid 10, 15 minutes, uh, goes to the bathroom and then I guess he realizes that he's made a huge mess with all of the broken glass. So he finds the mop and mop bucket and starts cleaning up his glass mess. Um, honestly, got to love a criminal who is at least respectful. Um, you know, a respectful thing. We love to see it. He didn't do a very good job, though. Uh, he left us these selfies, like some nice gifts on the store phone. Um, and after all that, he was in the business for about an hour and 10 minutes. And the only thing he walked out with was six chocolate champagne cupcakes. So I hope they're good, bro. Next time, just ask. We'll be happy to give you the six cupcakes. Have a good one. <laughs> that wild. He had to have been like drunk, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, to that's that. like six milligrams of Xanax activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, something something <laughs> breaking sure. and entering. Probably more than alcohol. Xanax. Yeah. yeah, 
I'm surprised she must not have had like a glass break alarm because I feel like a lot of businesses have like a glass break. So if somebody does that, then cops are showing up. The cops I mean, but never it's showed like up. A cupcake but I guess shop as the cupcake shop, you're like, I'll save some money and yeah. nobody's gonna bust into a cupcake shop yeah. until this. Well, it's Canada. They they have to ride in on horseback. So that's, that's true. true. <laughs> that's true. The Sorry, mounted police Canadian, take a little while to to respond. <laughs> Oh, man. Love it. So the bakery owner, Emma Levine, was obviously not happy to return to her business the next morning to see that someone had broken in. But when she called the police and they watched the surveillance footage, they had a pretty good laugh. I mean, it's honestly... It's pretty funny. Hilarious. And And I love what she did here. So she went to TikTok to try to get some help figuring out who the burglar was and help get him caught. And in the meantime, she decided to try and make the best out of a bad situation. Here's Emma's update. Hey guys, a lot of you have been asking for updates, so I wanted to give you some. This is what my door looks like right now. It is not the prettiest sight, but at least it's protecting people from the glass. Last night, the Vancouver police came by, grabbed the video footage, just some statements, and we had a great laugh with them. They thought this was so funny, um, given that, you know, this doesn't really happen. Most people don't clean up their own mess when they break in. They were honestly so nice and awesome. I got into work this morning and I thought, you know what? Let's make, let's turn some lemons into lemonade. We decided to make some orange neon sunglass cupcakes. Um, So we did this on a sugar cookie and then put them on the chocolate champagne cupcakes, which are the cupcakes that he walked away with that night. And thanks to literally each and every one of you your support your watching everything like that um we kind of picked up some attention from some news outlets and i did a couple of interviews today for that and i just really appreciate all of the kind words and the support and just like reaching out and you know i think people know that it's been really hard for small businesses um in the food industry or even not and it's been really really nice to see the community kind of come together and 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 get behind us so i just want to say thanks to each and every one of you and stay tuned for more updates i will try to keep posting to keep you informed i love that this is a sweet story a sweet cupcake story i mean that glass replacement's not gonna be cheap those glass doors are not cheap to fix but she was smart to come up with these cupcakes yeah they were raised money for it a uh, crime of passion became the flavor name. And obviously she was still wondering who the burglar was, the cupcake thief. But as it turns out, the burglar ended up coming to her directly. The man called the bakery to apologize profusely and offered to pay for the damages and those cupcakes, those six cupcakes. He was very clearly embarrassed by the whole thing and very regretful. Here's Emma explaining the situation. Hey, TikTok. Ask and you shall receive. Let's do some updates while my door gets fixed and I work on an order for tomorrow. So the big news is that our burglar gave us a call to the bakery. He spoke to my staff and we were able to arrange a time for him and I to have a conversation. He profusely apologized. Um, You know, you could tell it was really sincere and he has offered to pay for the door and for the cupcakes. Um, We've asked the police not to press charges, so we really hope that that's what happens. Um, But, you know, him and I had a good laugh together. You know, I told him I'm not mad or upset. So Canadian. He told me that maybe one day we could uh, sit down together and have a cupcake (laughs) and just talk about the situation. And he also told me that he would give me his orange sunglasses, which I am dying for. I feel like I would wear them all the time just to you know, make light of the situation. But that's the big update. Um, We'll obviously keep you posted if there's anything else that goes down. But our door is finally fixed and we're ready to go forward and drive on. They should like frame the the selfies of him and then put the sunglasses up on the wall next to them. We're not sure what prompted him to break into the bakery that night, but it's probably safe to assume, like we said, that he had one too many or he was on some sort of substance. And Emma, as you could see, was a very good sport for giving him and offering to have a laugh with him over some champagne cupcakes, of course. And the owner says she has a soft spot for the man and told police not to press charges, as you heard. Um, Also, if you are in the area, you should drop in and get some cupcakes from Emma. Uh, This bakery, what is it called again? Something Sweet in Dunbar, Vancouver. So to our Canadian friends out there, maybe you're nearby. And go get one of those delicious cupcakes. They look bomb. I'm with one of those rainbow ones. 
so good. Now I just want sweets. I know. So this next one is about a phone thief who ended up getting a martial arts lesson. So on April 24th, 2019, Meredith Livingood was finishing up a class at the New Orleans kickboxing studio that she trains at when she was approached by a man on his bike. He said he was interested in taking a class and wanted to know the schedules, but he didn't have his phone. So Meredith offered him to use hers. But when she pulled her phone out, the man immediately tried swiping it from her, and he quickly found out that trying to steal from a master MMA fighter outside of a literal kickboxing studio was probably a bad idea. Here's what happened. So there's no audio on this clip, but clearly there's a man pulling up on his bike. He's kind of looking inside. Snatches the phone. He said, oh. hell to the no. She pulls him off the got bike. Like it got him in a headlock, it looks like. Badass. Boom. He had to walk away in shame. <laughs> So as we saw, Meredith successfully fought off the would-be thief with her kung fu skills and Chinese kickboxing skills to get her phone back. And the police were called after that, but the thief was actually not caught. Here's Meredith's thoughts on the incident. I was able to get the phone out of his hand. Once I had the phone and he was restrained like that, he went limp for a second. I kind of pushed him off of me and then was able to get him in the face once and then just sort of heard him away from the studio, away from our students, and uh, get him on his bike and out of here. She says throughout the entire scuffle, she didn't feel scared at all. Once I pushed him away, he actually threatened that he had a gun. Um, I didn't really believe that he had a gun because usually people pull their gun out if they have a gun. But I told him that there were cameras and cops everywhere on this block, and so it would be stupid to pull the gun out if he had one. Mm. Nice to give her that little tip. Smart thinking. Mm-hmm. So her neighbor, Lo Floyd, was the man in the video with the baseball hat, and he said that he and a friend saw what was happening and immediately ran to help Meredith, but when they got there, they found out that she clearly already had it fucking handled. Police have warned others that if they are being robbed, they should give the robber what they want and call the police. Otherwise, the robber may seriously injure or kill the victim. So don't do what she did, I mean, unless you're trained the way she is, so... Here's what a former NOPD chief of police had to say about the incident. The fight right here, you see, this is where it starts to become really dangerous. I can't put myself in her shoes. You know, she made the choices she made, and I'm happy that she's not injured or hurt. But, you know, in a 30-plus year career in law enforcement and in studying criminal justice, uh, you see many instances in the blink of an eye where somebody says, I have a gun, and they actually do. At this point, he clearly wants to get the heck out of there. Let him go. Remember his picture. Remember his face. Remember his clothing. Remember his bicycle. Remember which way he was going and call the police. Yeah, I would never try and do that. Not that I have the skill, but mm -mm. too scared. Yeah, I would definitely be too scared. So on April 25th, 2023, a man stole a forklift from a construction site in Costa Mesa, California, and went on a rampage through Orange County. He hit cars and fences and tried hitting people, but was unsuccessful. Here's that video. Surveillance video right after a guy stole a forklift in Costa Mesa driving down the street. The fence he plowed through still stuck to the front of the forklift. Wow. Then he backs up, the fence then falling to the ground before he flees the area. We the showed the idiot. video to Stephanie D'Alessandro, who works across the street from where it happened. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty wild, but I mean, it's Costa Mesa. <laughs> it's Costa Mesa. Not surprised. Reminds me of Marvin Heemeyer. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Remember? It's very Marvin. His bulldozer rampage. Mm -hmm. Obviously, his was way crazier, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's absurd, honestly. What that? <laughs> I just always wonder. It's like, what are you trying to get out of this? Mm. Well, he I'm didn't have thinking. a motive like Marvin. Like, he's just doing it for the love of the game. Yeah, yeah he's just I guess. taking an action for fun. So the rampage ended when he stopped at a McDonald's for two McDoubles. He got Hell a little hungry yeah. driving that forklift. The Newport Beach police moved in and arrested the suspect, a 46-year-old man named Matthew Shore. He was booked on multiple charges, including stolen vehicle, burglary, and felony vandalism. This happened in April of this year, but the suspect, Matthew Shore, is a repeat offender because just four months later, he was busted for a similar incident. 
In August, Matthew stole a forklift and rampaged through the streets of downtown LA, trying to run people down and slamming into the side of the Tower Theater Apple store. Here's that video. Could have been a lot worse, too. In downtown LA, an unusual arrest for Grand Theft Auto, and here's why. That is a forklift going down the street after it was stolen in the area of 8th and Broadway. Moments later, you can see people running on the sidewalk. A passerby called 911 and began following the forklift. It eventually crashed, then continued driving. When it crashed a second time near Flower and 5th Streets, the LAPD caught up with the suspect. The driver was arrested. That's actually really scary. Yeah, that's a big forklift right there. Yeah, especially downtown like that. Yeah, Yeah, this is at 8th and Broadway. The suspect here crashed into uh, Apple Theater there and then continued on going into a park, damaging a peace bell that was in that park. Imagine the place you have to be at mentally to think this is a good idea one time, but then to do it again. Like, Mm -hmm. that was fun. Let me take another crack at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, LAPD officer told the press, quote, it's his thing, I guess, stealing forklifts and trying to run down humans with it. Mm. How long do you get for it? It must be a in like a temp- I don't yeah, know. like he's how do four they months even... later? He's doing it again. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what surprising. Was there any information about what the repercussions were for that? No, there really actually was not. I couldn't even find a mugshot, which is oh, that's weird. Or, very yeah. strange. But they'd have to be able to like prove that he was trying to mow people down. But but still, he could have. I don't know. I feel like he should get. Who's just leaving their forklift with the key in it that he's getting it? Like, how's he starting these forklifts up? He just like runs up, punches the guy out of the forklift, jumps in. <laughs> yeah, and, like, I'd love to know more off, like, about Grand how Theft Auto happened. style. Like, what is this? I'm surprised there wasn't more detail about this one. Josh, guess what we are having for dinner on this beautiful fall day? What are we having? Creamy, dreamy potato mushroom soup. Creamy, dreamy? Mm-hmm. Mm. Creamy and dreamy. That's... Doesn't that sound so good? And that... it comes with ciabatta croutons. Ooh. I know. Ciabatta croutons. I know. I'm pumped. And tomorrow night, we have smashed black bean and turkey tostadas. Ooh. Yummy. Hello Water's Fresh is like just that. coming in hot. They always do, man. In and I love it this season. time of year because they offer more soups. And I, I'm i just a soup queen. I love the soups. If you have a crazy fall schedule like us, it can be easy to fall back into your dinnertime recipe rut. So keep mealtime exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every week. So there's always something delicious to discover with HelloFresh. HelloFresh has a market that's got so many add-ons that are just so mouth-watering and delicious and right now they're serving up the seasonal limited time fall flavors feast on desserts like the apple cider cake with caramel sauce oh my god that sounds so good sounds amazing or please a crowd with appetizers like the barbecue pulled pork nachos hell yeah that's what i'm about and don't forget the mini pumpkin cheesecake which is just perfect for that little me time you have a me time Mm. treat but best of all, save money with HelloFresh. Stop eating out, doing takeout. It's so freaking expensive. And cut back on your food waste. That's one of the biggest things for us is we're able to cut way back yeah, on our I food waste. I have three people in my family. I usually cook for 30. So that really helps me cut back on my food costs. Because usually I cook way too <laughs> Josh much Josh has it too much, Gene, in general. I so do. I do. this helps us because it sends us exactly what we need and nothing that we don't. So we don't waste anything. So if you haven't tried HelloFresh, stop what you're doing. Go to hellfresh.com slash 50 mile higher and use code 50 mile higher for 50% off plus free shipping. Go to hellfresh.com slash 50 mile higher and use code 50 mile higher for 50% off plus free shipping today. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Well, let's uh, talk about this DUI driver that called 911 on himself. Yeah, pretty He's, amazing. When people call 911 on themselves, mm-hmm. it's always a... Uh, interesting one. Oh yeah i mean have you heard like when people call 911 after they killed some yeah someone and they yeah, just straight are, up admit it right like yeah, i just killed are. my wife or my husband or whatever those are oh they give me the chills but anyway in march of 2023 a man was driving down highway 77 through lancaster county nebraska and he called 911 to report that someone was driving on the wrong side of the road but it turns out <laughs> this person was him 
Here's the call. 911, where is your emergency? Um, I'm on Highway 77 going north, and there is somebody that is on the wrong side of the road. And then what, uh, did you see what color or type of vehicle it was? No, he had his brights on, man. He almost okay. ran me off the road. Which lane, which direction is he in? North or south? I am going I am going northbound on 77. He was going southbound. I am on the east lane. He was on the west lane. That was gnarly. That was like a lot. That was gnarly. That was like a lot. So do you think that maybe he thought he was going the correct way and that the other people who actually were That's were on the right side of the road? Yeah. That's what it seems like. Yeah. He clearly was very confused. And he was so drunk before he had called 911 that he actually called 119. The police responded and arrested the man, and his blood alcohol content was twice over the scary. legal He's rent out there limit. driving. Yeah, very scary. God. Very scary. Here's part of the footage from his arrest. Yeah, do you know why I stopped you? Yeah, because I was on the wrong side of the road. Were you the one that called in? Yep. You were? <laughs> yeah, because I thought somebody was on the wrong side. Oh, no. Turned out it was you. Yeah, look at them. Yeah, look at them. <laughs> yep. At least he knows. Good God. So some UK robbers lost some cash with a single gust of wind. On March 17, 2018, a travel agency. Oh, I'm going to butcher this one. Oh, yeah. Good luck with that. Droilsden. Droilsden. Droilsden, Greater Manchester. We're probably still saying it wrong. Probably. It's probably like Droilsden. Wow. Droilsden. I don't know what Bulls country going. that is, but okay. I guarantee we're not hitting it at all. So this travel agency was robbed by a group of two men, and these robbers threatened the staff with guns and told them to hand over their money, and of course the frightened staff complied. The robbers thought they made a clean break and just made a couple hundred dollars, but Mother Nature had other plans. Here's what happened when the robbers stepped outside to make their getaway. I'm sure you can already imagine what this is. So they step outside... <laughs> and there it goes. And there goes the <laughs> couple hundred bucks they just stole. I, I don't, him. his movement. I know it's almost like he like shit his pants when this happened. He's like, yo. And it's just blown away. Like, God damn, do I go back and get it? He's like, Fuck. He gives up. And it keeps going. <laughs> he tries to pick it up. <laughs> Completely point. I love that instant karma. Oh, amazing. Thank you, Mother Nature. Amazing. Apparently, these guys haven't been caught either, so they're still at large. Oh, I wonder if it's like... And the money's still at large as well. <laughs> There's money blowing around. It's up for grabs. I wonder if people just went out and picked it up or Probably. the store owners got it back somehow or... Interesting. I mean, it's a couple hundred bucks, so... Yeah. I'm sure nobody's that upset about it. Oh, you know what just came to my mind? Speaking of dumb criminals, remember that nail salon video that went viral yes. of the guy that tried to break in? <laughs> that was so great. I think we were going to play it on the session and we ended up not. Or maybe yeah. we did. I can't remember. I, can't, I honestly don't remember if we did. But okay, we have to Josh, find the video. you need to see this. This is dude. honestly so it's funny. It's so funny. Okay, this happened, yeah, back in July. And look at this video here. <laughs> and out of our Southern Bureau, look at that. You have to look at this. So there's this guy in Atlanta. He comes into this nail salon. He tries to rob it. Listen. Everybody get down. Get down the bus. Get down the bus. I'm so confused. They're yeah. all giving home. Like, does anybody in there even flinch? Like, not even <laughs> one person, <laughs> I guess. But that's like the I don't give a of like all thefts ever. Just completely ignored. Um, somebody left, and then that was like pretty much it. Apparently, the guy left. That was it. That was the end of it. He's like, he just kind of gives working. up and, and walks out. Oh, God damn. And what's so funny is I remember watching the clip of it, and he goes outside and he's like, "Where's your money?" And the woman's like, "I don't have any cash." <laughs> then he just like leaves. Like, oh well, shit. Yeah, I don't think they ever found his ass. No, I don't think they did. As far as I know, probably can still charge him with attempted robbery. Right there. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. He's like trying to fake that he had a gun in his little bag. Yeah, and they're all just like, looking at like, him like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> it's even funnier without their music in the background because it it's just silent. It's so funny. <laughs> anyway, okay, so this next one comes out of Australia, Melbourne. Um, it was a failed ATM smash and grab case. It occurred 3.45 a.m. on November 26, 2019. 
Two Aussie thieves tried to steal an ATM by driving a car into a store, but they were very unsuccessful. The attempted theft took place in Cranbourne, East Melbourne. Oh, right. Like Melbourne. Cranbourne. Yeah, it's the same thing. The born is Ben. Cranbourne, East Melbourne. (laughs) Using a stolen Nissan Duallis with stolen plates. And here's the video. Yikes. Pal, you're good. You're good. All right, back it in. You're good. Try again. Oh, boom! Wow. I love how the dude out there is literally like directing. Yeah, think up. Keep going. Try again. Oh, almost got it. Back up. Like fuck. Let me just try this. I was gonna say, when are they gonna get the strap out? Because that's usually when they just grab the whole thing. This happens a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. When I worked at the bank, there was like tons of stories about this happening and to look you know if you come in one day and the atm's gone check the surveillance tapes because it's probably what happened check the surveillance tapes yeah i assume the whole front of this the store would be gone too yeah probably (laughs) there's a drive-thru customer (laughs) it's just taking so long bro let's go i know maybe should have gotten a bigger vehicle too like i'm a little stronger work under pressure like this i would absolutely fall apart with the stress it's just like atms don't even have that much no. money in them either did they i don't know anything about that and they get restocked in the morning okay so like by the end of the day i mean uh, this looks like it's a convenience store or something so it's probably might hold a little bit more since it doesn't get serviced as much but it's and, like the same thing we did in the last one remember some guy like t- tried to steal an atm oh yeah right i do remember that now anchoring it up police are just standing outside go (laughs) Woo! we got it (laughs) (laughs) no stupid he's like shit try it again they can't get enough like speed in this little tiny car floor it no not that (laughs) he's like gotta get some some momentum yeah you didn't even try oh. that time. Oh, that was good. This is going really well. I mean, sometimes this shit looks like it's out of a video game, doesn't it? Know, like, it's so it just stupid. looks like. It's so how's stupid. this even real life? <sighs> so the thieves drove the car through the shopping center's window, as you could see, and rammed it into the ATM multiple times. They also chained the ATM to the car and drove out with it, which obviously didn't work. And I wonder where they got that idea from. Mm-hmm. Leave me on trailer park, and I'm robbing your store and tearing this bank machine right the fuck out of here. So hope you enjoy this. Fucking talking to me. Are you guys fucking stupid? Look, you're on the camera. Three fucking cameras. Look at who? That's the kind of vehicle you need. <laughs> I'm making this. That's how you hey, do it. Work it for them. That's how you do it, folks. Oh, <laughs> so. Thanks, a milkshake. amazing so the two thieves made their escape and ditched the car nearby they left behind a hefty bill for all the damages done to the shopping center as you can imagine that was quite a bit they definitely weren't successful in stealing the atm they also fucked up their car but so far they've managed to escape without being caught by the police nothing was stolen from the shopping center but the repairs for the damages were estimated to cost tens of thousands of dollars for two idiots I'd be so pissed. Did absolutely nothing. Oh, that sucks. Can't believe they haven't been caught too. So if you know anything or have seen these guys, they're watching the episode. Report them. Probably embarrassing for them. That is embarrassing. So this next one is about some car thieves tricked by a barking sheriff at 8:25 a.m. on August 18, 2023. The Pierce County Sheriff's Office deputies in Tacoma, Washington, were dispatched to a cemetery on Chambers Creek Way in University Place. They had a report of a stolen vehicle. Police found the car and engaged it in a chase, and the car was being driven by four teenagers. Police were able to get ahead of them and put spike strips on the road in order to disable the car. The spike strips worked. The teens drove right over them and popped all four tires, but they somehow rounded the corner and kept going. The police found the stolen car ditched off of Bridgeport Way, and all the suspects were gone. Here's a video. So he's found approaching Chambers Lane, Chambers Creek. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. They drove literally right over the spike mm-hmm. strip. Nice. Can you even have to pull it? Unreadable, I guess. Clear. Approach the car. Approach the car. Gate breaking. But it didn't take very long for the deputies to find the two of them. They were hiding out in a ravine near a creek bed, and now the deputy had to coax them out of hiding in order to make an arrest, and he tried a very interesting technique to do it. The officer called out to the suspects that he was going to release the canine unit Smart. and then started barking like a dog. <laughs> and believe it or not, this actually worked. Nobody wants to get Here it. Here is the footage. They're down here. They're down here. Yeah, there's two down in the ravine right now. Don't make us release our canine. They're like, fuck that. Well, they're working their way south in the creek. It's like one mill blade fan. He's pretty good at it. Yeah. Better stop. That is not good. I'm sorry. That does not feel like a dog. Two more coming. Oh, that's so That's honestly a great idea. I'm surprised they don't have like some type of sound machine that they can use of like a to lure them out. That's so smart. They should carry that on. Yeah. Them. Hmm. That's a we good idea. We don't actually have the dogs. That's very smart. Our next invention. Mm-hmm. There we go. Our next million dollar idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so both teens were placed under arrest immediately. And shortly after that, the other two suspects were found and arrested as well. The two suspects arrested at the creek bed said they truly did believe a dog was about to come for them. One of them told the detective, as soon as I heard the dog, I gave up. Relatable. This is not the first time this officer has used this technique. It sounded like he had done it before. And here's what he had to say about it. Several years ago, he was out on a call for a woman with a warrant who refused to come out of her home. I decided to bark like one of our canines. That was just the beginning. He says he started <laughs> race, leaning up against the home and to, get a step further. and to make it sound like the dog was jumping on the side of the house and scratching it. I used the rank, rake and uh, was able to to get her Smart. to come out to the parking. Oh, if I can make my job easier and do that and um, keep everybody safe, that's the goal. Smith has a range Smart. of vocal skills with many animal imitations oh. in his repertoire. <laughs> and maybe I'll use that next time. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Canine cat, baby. Oh my God. Canine cat? Canine cat. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait what? <laughs> Senine. <at> all. <laughs> Senine. <laughs> that went right yeah. over my head. Senine. All three of us Senine. Going. Cat nine. You mean feline? Canine. Did you say C9? C9. <laughs> cat nine. <laughs> cat nine. Canine <laughs> cat. It's like cat dog. Remember that show? Oh, yeah, I love That's that. That's a canine cat. I hated that they show. had that, though. Like, somebody releases a cat. It's like, <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> Come out. Put the cat in. I don't know. Meatballs get, would probably scare people. Or get one of those fucking Panteras. The What's panther, the, the, the Russian couple or whatever that has the fucking pan, black panther at home. <laughs> what? I showed you on TikTok. The, oh, oh, no, yeah. I showed the, you. Yeah, the pet panther. Have you seen that? Yes. Police should use those. Those will go well, right Well, I feel like now we have to show the clip okay. of the panther. You haven't seen that? I showed it to you, babe. No, I showed you. No, I showed you. <laughs> I showed you. The one who had it as a pet and she thought it was a cat. Yeah. But then oh, grew it up. Sorry. But TikTok. then it grew up. My it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Stop dancing. <laughs> she oh, thought it was wow. a baby panther. I mean, a baby kitten. <laughs> <laughs> she thought she had found a kitten. Canine and cat. it turns out it's a fucking black panther. That is sick. Oh. I'm not get copyright. We're going to turn that off. It's wow. so cute. Oh my so God, cute. I want one. And it becomes oh, like yeah. best friends That's with right. her Rottweiler. Oh, so freaking cute. So imagine a canine cat like that. A canine, a canine cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a canine cat. That would be, dude, I would. Look at that. It plays with a Rottweiler. That. It's crazy. You can't dude. hide from that thing. 
The thing you climb up in a tree but that, that would fucking... like kill you. <laughs> it's just like imagine if the police force had those oh. canine cats. Damn. Canine cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's so freaking cute. Yeah, it's the coolest thing. I want one. Or like a skunk, and they like a police, like, <laughs> a police skunk. Canine they spray skunk. You goes to spray. Hey, you. that's not a bad idea <laughs> to get people out of. Like if they're hiding in a house, they can't get them to come out. You send the skunk in, they're gonna come out quickly. No, the, the skunks would end up getting murdered. That's fucking good. No. Or like a stink bug. A stink, a stink bug. bug. No. Yeah. Those are nasty. The officer who just has a tiny little cage. He's like <laughs> <laughs> tweezers. <laughs> Go get him. <laughs> okay. So speaking of animals, the next case here Our case last one. is about a reckless driver dog. Okay. On December 1st, 2022, someone in Kilgore, Texas called police to report a reckless driver barreling through the parking lot of a local Walmart, which is not totally out of the ordinary. I mean, Walmart parking lots. They've probably crazy responded places. to like three of those. They're like, oh, not again. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus. <laughs> the suspect was in an SUV crashing into vehicles around him. One of the victims watched helplessly as a truck headed for their car. They didn't have time to move out of the way, and the truck hit them. When the other driver looked up at the suspect in the truck, he was shocked to see who was behind the wheel. Guess what? It wasn't a person, but a dog. A canine. A canine cat. <laughs> <laughs> when the police arrived, they confirmed that the reckless driver was a cute and probably very confused pup. Maybe it was like that one pup that's like, I'm a dog. That's like questioning its oh, existence. Oh, yeah. We were talking yeah. about that. Well, now I have to explain that. <laughs> Should we pull it up? Yeah. Pull it up. That, yeah. That's Bunny the dog. What, Here, let me send you the Bunny TikTok. The dog. Let's just let's just have a moment. Smart for, dog. This is like pretty interesting. We should get Bunny on the show. We should. She can talk. So we, like, I know this. I'm sure many of you have seen this dog. It's pretty it's well famous. known, and it's actually a human in a dog suit. Keep in mind, this is like another guy covering it, talking about it, and it's possible he is not saying true things. I don't know. He, I don't know. It looks like he has a podcast or something, maybe. Give me a second. Her TikTok is what about Bunny? Well, we can let's show Bunny here in a minute. Let me let me finish this story real quick. Okay, we'll end with Bunny. I'll find okay. it. Yeah. So what had happened was the dog's owner left him inside the car when he went into the store, and the car was still running, and the steering column had prior damage. The dog got antsy while its owner was inside and started to walk around on the seats as dogs do. When he did that, his leash got caught on the parking brake and actually released it, sending the truck running into other vehicles. The Kilgore Police Department reported on Facebook that nobody was harmed during the incident, including the doggy. They did not ask for the doggy's license, but police said he definitely looked guilty. He's a guilty boy. At Farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing. <laughs> He's a guilty boy. We are farmers. <laughs> we've covered that. <laughs> Oh, but let's end this episode with Bunny the dog. Yeah, this is interesting. This I came across is. this last night, which I've seen Bunny many times. She is a dog that is very smart, and their owner set up this like lore board that has all these buttons with words, and the dog can communicate. And I've there's so many videos of this dog, but it'll say like I want to go on a walk or I want food or I don't know whatever dogs say, right? And this clip comes from an account called Metaphysical. And listen to what he has to say about Bunny the dog. Dogs named Bunny the dog. And the dog was given a bunch of buttons. You press a series of the buttons, you can actually formulate a sentence. And the dog started to use and learn English through these buttons that it's pressing to the point where the dog is actually having an incredible existential crisis right now, where it's looking in the mirror and it doesn't understand why it's a dog. It thinks and wants to be a human being to the point where owner, as I guess, put Bunny, this dog, on antidepressants because the, the dog will just stare in the mirror it will constantly ask her why dog why am i a dog dog why i don't know how to answer that because because bunny dog bunny dog so I feel bad i know bunny. i feel bad for I feel like it's it it's just confusing the hell out of their dog i just confirmed it too um Bunny the talking sheepadoodle who can talk sheepadoodle. I've never heard of a sheepadoodle. Can talk by using soundbar alarms. Uh, 
is now on antidepressants or the the TikTok star, the owner, asked followers about antidepressants for the dog because she's questioning her identity. That's really sad. I feel bad for her. She's probably I stressed. I know. She's got 8 million followers on TikTok. That's a lot. Probably more by now. This is hold on her little January. shoulders. I know. It's a lot for Bunny. Yeah, she's she's smart. Bunny the dog. Anyway. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Can animals start having those thoughts of like, why am I this? Why am I that? I mean, we have as humans. Why human? What, yeah. What's life? <laughs> what purpose? What's the intelligence level of a dog, though? They I've, say it's around two years. Of, like, sorry, a two-year-old human. Really? That's it? I don't know. That's what it, I Are feel you like something sure? That's yeah, I feel like what Bernie's I read, like at least five. <clears throat> our dog's way recently. too smart for his own good. Mm, no, he still Our Our dog himself. looks at us like every day and it's like, why dog? <laughs> I read that like German shepherds can be up to like seven years old. Yeah, older, German shepherds are definitely. But... It says, according to several behavioral measures, dogs' mental abilities are close to a human child age two to two and a half years. Hmm. Yeah, and the dog's breed determines some of those differences. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Two year olds. What do you guys think is the smartest dog breed? Mm. Can't they like research, like quantify that? I'm not sure, but I'm looking up an article in Reader's Digest, and they have a list. I would say that like border German collie? Shepherd is definitely on there. Yeah. Julia, you nailed it. Number one, Border, border collie. collie. Boom. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yay. German What's Shepherds the dumbest good. dog? My dog, Cookie. My dog. <laughs> yeah, your dog. <laughs> Poor Cookie. Poodle is second. German Shepherd is third. Then Golden Retriever, followed by uh, Doberman Pinscher. Let me look up what is the dumbest dog. Dumbest dog. Let's see. From dogstar.com, the 10 dumbest dog breeds. This is based on their green behavior, activity, level behavior, blah, 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 learning, short, Basset short term hound, memory. Mastiff. Uh, yep, I got Bas Beagle, mm -hmm. Pekingese, Bloodhound, Borzoi. A Borzoi? I've never heard of so a Borzoi. Borzoi? Pencil nosed dog. <gasps> oh, oh, I love it. Mind, don't worry for you. <laughs> A Chow Chow Bulldog, a Senji, and an African Hound. I'm surprised. Some of these seem like smart dogs to me. A Basset Hound? I thought they were kind of smart. Yeah, I thought like Bloodhounds. I did know. They, they, they used, wait, hound. they used blood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just because they can smell shit doesn't mean they're intelligent. But they like lead people to things. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They're useful. Their nose is the only good thing. Listen, the true answer is no dogs are dumb. They're all good, correct smart dogs. They're beautiful little babies. And sorry to offend you if you have a basset hound. I love basset I, hounds. Hey. I had a neighbor that had one, and that thing would not shut up. Dude, same. It just would all day, all night, just howl, howl, we had, howl. We had one in our neighborhood that was named Bruce, and it sounded like he was saying his name because it'd be like, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> You hear him all, dude. He used to and scare me. I used to run past their house. He's actually one of my best friend's dogs, but maybe he's like Bunny. He's like, maybe. why Bruce? He's like, why Bruce? He's yeah. calling out to God. He's like, Bruce. <laughs> why am I Bruce? Listen, I ask myself every day, why Kendall? Mm -hmm. <laughs> why here? Why now? Mm -hmm. Why? Why life? Why play? If you Earth? don't have an existential crisis like once a month or so, yeah, are you even human? I don't think so. I'm it's not. part of the human experience, right? <laughs> That is so relatable, though. Like uh, mm -hmm. the bunny, the dog, just being like getting into her teenage years, or whatever, and being like, <laughs> "What am I? Yeah. Why am I like yeah. why? needing antidepressants?" And antidepressants. I'm like, "Wow, <laughs> what, that's so <laughs> relatable." Been Girl. There. <laughs> literally been there. Oh man, oh, bunny, what a fun episode. Oh my god, Seymour has just been sitting here like this the whole time. I'm sorry, buddy. He yeah. needs a chiropractic disarmed. Adjustment. Let me get him. His disarmed. funny bone is fractured. He hasn't laughed once. Yeah, <laughs> right, he looks like he got twisted. One, man. two. Ooh. All right, there he goes. Oh. oh, feels much better now. All right, buddy. Well, that is it for us today. <laughs> he doesn't really sit, huh? No. He does, but he's you gotta kind of work with him. He's he's okay. difficult. All right, thanks, Seymour. It's been real. But yeah, let us we'll know see you next week your uh, your favorite dumb criminal or dumb crime that you heard today. We want to know what was your favorite. Probably the world's chillest man. Tony, man. Tony, he's a Tony's, G. Yeah. I think my favorite is Cupcake Thief. 
Uh, that's probably my second. The selfies just added so much. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I need to document this. And I and I, that had a happy ending to it. Just mm -hmm. no no jail. Just I'll good. pay for everything. Say sorry. Uh, I feel so good after doing this episode. I know. You know? Like, Spirits are higher than lower. Yeah. Yeah. We're really Usually we end a mile lower at the end of our episodes. Like, uh, it's just like yeah. heavy, but interesting. But we're heavy. actually a mile higher today. What was your guys' favorite mm, criminals today? Probably the guy calling 911 on himself. That was good. <laughs> I think mine was probably mm, the sheriff barking. That, that was that good. Was <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's great too. <laughs> so I like that. Funny. I would never be able to live that down too if I was no. like a, as a kid and I got tricked by a cop going, <laughs> 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 so embarrassing. <laughs> Nobody would ever let me through. <laughs> no. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for us today. We will be back next week. And until then, keep on taking your mind mile higher. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>